Hey guys, welcome back to the Dream Life Parade playthrough series. Since I did get $100 on my Patreon, we will be continuing this for the month of January. And not only is there a new Dream Life Parade for Nijigasaki, there's also the return of the two previous ones. We finished the Aqua one last time since it was only 30 stages, but the Trial Parade also got 20 new stages that I kind of chipped away at at the beginning of December when that was available. I didn't actually finish on my first playthrough, uh, even with the refreshes, since the stages 31 through 50 are just damaged trucks. So it really requires like two events worth of plays in order to actually beat that. I got to stage 45 there, and I'll talk more about that when those videos come out. I'm just talking about random nonsense right now because the beginning songs for a DLP, really, I have no commentary for. You can just kind of smash your head at the wall and pass these songs. They're designed to be very beginner friendly. So uh, I, this, I think this is a good opportunity to, you know, do some catch up on some things before there's some actual songs I do have to talk about for the mechanics. There's quite a few actually for the first third of this particular parade. One thing about this parade that is unique, well, in the sense that the song selection is all Nijigasaki songs. And of course the intent is for the majority of the songs to be of the group that it's based on, but it's just that Muse and Aqua don't have enough songs to form a full 30 song parade of just their songs. Maybe in the future they will. Definitely in the future they will. They, they have the songs, they just have a restricted schedule on when they want to release them. So we only really get one new song per month for each group at best. So anyway... The Nijigasaki Parade is probably easier than the previous two ones, at least in terms of the first 30 stages. The... Major thing to keep in mind, and I'll bring it up whenever it's relevant, is that there's going to be a huge priority placed on SP type cards and SP filler cards in general. There's a lot of songs with mechanics and appeal chances that just require you to have enough SP to use the SP skill for. You'll see very shortly what kind of songs I'm talking about. But if you've already played through this first part of the parade yourself, then I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. So that's Wonderland done. I had nothing to talk about that because it's the first song and really anyone can pass the first song. And I'm pretty sure even a fresh account can pass the first song if, uh, if they just level their cards up and train them enough. Okay, next off, Yume e no Ippo. It's another easy song. I'm putting Shioriko in the center just because I rarely have any opportunities to use Shioriko as a center. And there are like free missions that involve having her as the center and then playing enough songs to get some really shitty rewards. <laughs> uh, well, aside from the, you know, the loyalty badges, of course, where they require a hundred, a thousand, five thousand plays for your Oshi. I'm talking more about the, uh, I use the SP skill with a particular member and those kind of shitty rewards that get you the coins and the experience coins. Again, this is another song that we practically played for every parade so far. So, most of the time we encounter it early on too. There aren't any mechanics that really need to be focused on for this song, but the next song uh, does involve a little bit of team building finesse if you do want to be efficient with it. So I'll save that for that. For now, just I'm just gonna finish catching up. So what have I, I been up to? Uh, I did put a hold on the lecture series for now just because of another DLP. So the DLP stuff will be pretty much the content for this week. And then hopefully I will have time next week to resume the lecture series. I'm really just trying to finesse some time to actually record all the stuff I need to record. And it's a lot harder now that it's no longer December. 
So hopefully I'll be able to finish the majority of the lecture series by the end of January. I might be saving the team building videos in particular for February though, depending on uh, how much I actually want to cover in them. Alright, third song. Uh, this song does a lot of damage, actually. Kanata's second solo, I believe. Right, second solo, yeah. Um, it does six trick notes of 2,000 damage each. So that's why I have a SR healer card, who coincidentally is also Kanata. I just kind of picked her because she is a guard type, and she's also cool attribute. Now, in the past month, I've been doing a lot of training and playing for Macarons to pretty much invest in all my guard type cards. So those are pretty much done. At least they're done up to their base form nodes. There's a lot of limit increase nodes that I am choosing not to unlock. Mainly because if I do want to make some strategy guides for the future, it's better that the SR cards don't have the, the limit increase nodes unlocked. Because then it makes it more player friendly, since I can always just say, Oh, use this card, instead of saying, Oh, use this card with three limit increases. It's more likely that a player will have a particular card, versus having that particular card with three limit increases. So that's kind of why I'm refraining from actually investing in these uh, limit increase tiles for the SR cards, because I'm kind of future-proofing my account to be able to make these guide videos. It'll probably be a long ways away since I still need to finish the lecture series, and every month that there is DLP content, that's gonna take a lot of time as well, and car reviews will always still be a thing, so it's really just about how much time I can actually squeeze from the month where I don't actually have any planned content already. Anyway, the major thing about this song I already mentioned, it does 6 trick notes worth of 2,000 damage each, so having a sustain card is probably the easiest way to approach it. Kanata does make it so our score is like 300,000 more than I'd like it to be, but for the early parts of the parade, I'm not too concerned about efficiency. Especially now that I have to do another parade after this one. I have to finish off the trial parade. Okay, so uh, Emma's second solo song. I have three SP type cards on the main strategy. This is important since uh, there's gonna be a lot of SP skill usage AC requirements. So you don't necessarily need to use SP fillers. Here I'm just using SP cards that I have like really weak and haven't invested in yet, so they have weak stats. The majority of the voltage score from this song will be from clearing the appeal chances. So as long as you clear the appeal chances, there isn't really any problem. You can use like the weakest team imaginable as long as you clear the appeal chances. So that's why it's important to have these SP type cards so that you can fill the SP gauge in time. Uh, not everyone has like a maximum limit increased and fully skill level bracelet, so your performance will vary just based on your particular accessory setup. And if you do seem to be, you know, lacking in the SP, like you're not being able to get enough before the appeal chance ends, you can do some things like modify the amount of bracelets you're using, or use more SP filler cards. That's kind of obvious. I did show my accessory setup at the beginning of the video, I just never, didn't really talk about it, but you should know by now if you have been following the series, but if you're new, then I am using two maximum limit increased UR brooches, maximum skill levels now. I got off my lazy ass and finally bothered to uh, skill them up, and then one maximum level and skill level bracelet 
on the main strategy. And the reason I do a two brooch, one bracelet setup is because uh, you usually put the bracelets on the side strategy, but for DLP, I use star necklaces on the side strategies instead. And the side strategy cards are mostly filler anyway, so you're not getting much SP from them. So it's just better to use one really strong bracelet on a main strategy, because then at least you'll be getting a significant amount of uh, SP fill from that. And it does come with the cost of a slightly lower appeal, because you're losing one brooch, but you can live without it pretty much. The SP is more valuable than the appeal increase from the brooches, to be honest. Like, if you don't have strong brooches, just put three bracelets and it'll probably be better in most cases. Anyway, for Shizuku's first solo song, this one is kind of difficult since it requires a 2.2 million requirement and you're playing the intermediate version of it. This is the last intermediate version and then the rest of the songs will be on advanced difficulty. So you can see that I'm using the UR Event Rico to kind of compensate for the lack of getting a lot of voltage from clearing the appeal chances. I'm also using a SR nose on me that does some SP filling, allows me to get more SP skill uses, which I don't think mattered too much, but it might have mattered for clearing this song. Anyway, uh, the goal is you definitely want to one-shot these early songs, because if you're wasting more than 9 PP for these early songs, it's really inefficient. So if it does mean you're using like a UR card to do so, then it's still worth it. But you'd rather use one UR card's PP than save that UR card and use 9 more PP just to compensate for a small deficit in the score. So here we got around 2.4 mil, even though the requirement was only 2.2 mil. Again, since there's gonna be a lot more recording and DLP play for these next few days, I'm not gonna care too much about efficiency as I normally do. Since there's only 30 stages for the Nijigasaki Parade, it really doesn't matter if I'm efficient or not. I can just use the refill after I'm done like 70% of it and it'll, I'll be good. All right, Teletelepathy. This is another tricky song if uh, you don't know what you're doing. So here again, I'm using three SP type cards because the first appeal chance is an SP skill requirement. So you really need to make sure you can get it in one shot. And my particular setup isn't actually able to get it in one shot, but I do a trick where I switch to my voltage type strategy of three voltage type cards. And then that allows me to actually get past 55,000 voltage. Yeah, you can see here, switch to the green, activate the SP skill for 60,000 voltage gain, and then switch back to the red strategy, which is the main one I'm using for tapping. It's a very important trick to know about, that you can just abuse the strategy effect, even if you're not planning to use that strategy for the majority of the song. Because the strategy effect will always be there, no matter how bad the cards are. If you put three voltage type cards on a strategy, switch to that strategy, and then use the SP skill, it'll be a 15% stronger SP skill. Go watch the SP skill lecture if you want to uh, learn more about SP skill mechanics. But this is really something that's kind of basic to know about. I also have a skill type strategy on the blue strategy for faster swapping, because there is that one particular appeal chance where you do have to do swapping for seven members. You don't need to have a skill type strategy for that, because you have plenty of nodes to actually do enough these switches. I think I was just using those particular cards because uh, they have uh, low stamina. So the final appeal chance does give you enough nodes to use the SP skill twice, at least as long as you're using SP type cards. So that's that's why I would suggest using a 3 SP type card strategy when approaching this song. Last thing to keep in mind is that the amount of SP you get per note tap is based on the rarity of the card, so using 3 R cards probably won't be good enough. Another 
Alright, next off we have my favorite solo. It's another initial song, so the appeal chance voltage you get for clearing it is very low. So in order to actually one-shot this, I required using the Event Emma as well as the UR Shizuku. It's not too big of a deal since it is the Nijikasaki Parade and they have two PP each. I used Ai as my third member just because it's her song, but I guess more importantly from a team building perspective, she's active attribute and she's an SP filler, so definitely helped out with the overall score. Now, you might be tempted to use your Festival Kanon on this song, but you really don't need to. I'm pretty sure it's better off you just save that for another song in like, second part? Like one of the- one of the songs in the second part is a much better use of your Festival Kanon. Don't just waste it on this song. Speaking of the attributes for this particular parade, it's a lot more balanced. And they don't really have any kind of gauntlet in the sense that they put like a whole bunch of a particular attribute in succession. Kind of like how we had the pure gauntlet for the initial trial event. So that's nice. It's another one of those things that kind of makes this parade a bit more easier than the other two. Isn't that just one giant wall of one particular attribute that's just gonna drain your resources or force a refresh? So even though I do reach yellow stamina near the end of this song, it doesn't really matter too much because you'll see that I'm still exceeding the voltage requirement by quite a bit. And it's not like I have deficits in healer cards or shielder cards anymore just because I have invested in pretty much all of them that I have at this point. But it's more so that I don't need them. Alright, this is another SP-heavy song. It's Setsuna's second solo, Melody. It's a really fun song, actually, if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna have a hard time. And really, the trick is to just use her enough bracelets so that you will be able to use the SP skill every appeal chance. That's really the easiest way you can do it. If you don't have good bracelets, then you'll definitely struggle with this song. E even here, I'm using three SP fillers. And I also have the one bracelet, uh, the, the maximum rarity and skill level on the main strategy. Again, if you don't have maximum rarity and skill level bracelet, then just slap as many bracelets as you possibly can on all your strategies. That's the best advice I can give you for this song. It's not like you need the brooches for this song, or the necklaces, because the damage in the first third of the parade is rather insignificant. And when you're using an SP-type tactic, you really don't need to care about the HP of your show formation. Like, you can reach a red stamina, and the SP skill will still do the same amount. The SP skill isn't affected by the stamina modifier, so... It's an, an advantage of using SP-based tactics. Sure, it does mean that your tap score suffers, but when the majority of your voltage gain is from clearing these appeal chances, it really doesn't matter. Like, you can see we're exceeding the voltage requirement by over a million, and I'm not even trying to do that. It's just that I'm using three SP filler cards to make sure I can clear all the appeal chances, and really, this extra million just comes from uh, the, the tapping of the notes. The only really solid advice I can give you for this particular DLP is make sure you allocate your SP type cards and your SP filler cards appropriately. Don't just slap them on as filler because you need filler. But make sure when you're using filler, you're actually using cards that are kind of jank. Jank would include like weak voltage type cards and, and uh, I guess weak guard type cards that don't have much invested into them. Okay, this next song is pretty fun. It's Wish 
it has a low appeal chance voltage, though, despite it being a second solo. So I did have to use my festival current to kind of compensate for that 4 million voltage that you need outside of just clearing appeal chances. I'm also using the UR Event Ellie, just because she's kind of jank and I don't really have any other opportunity to use her. As well as this Nico. And this toy Nico is very interesting because it provides a source of healing when you do strategy switches. So that's why I start on the green strategy for this particular song instead of the red strategy. Normally I like to do a strategy switch at the beginning of the song to clock any kind of effects. But if you have an effect like Nico's where it activates when you do a strategy switch, then you want to start on the green strategy so that you can manipulate when exactly you want the heal. And what I did and you might want to want to rewatch that again if you missed it. Is that when the appeal chance started, I switched to my red strategy, which had three voltage type cards, so that I could do the trick of increasing the SP skill voltage. But also, this allowed me to use Nico's show ability because I did a strategy switch. And then once I cleared the appeal chance, I swapped back to the green strategy, which was the main strategy that I'm using for tapping notes. And then that allowed me to use Nico's second activation of her show ability, healing me back to full. So this is a rather creative way you can use this particular Nico's show ability if you do have this Nico. Or if you have another card that does something similar. It's best used for songs where you know you have to do a strategy switch at some point. So you can manipulate when exactly you're getting the heal. Our score is very close to the threshold, only 10,000 above, and you know when it gets that close, it's, it's the chef's kiss. I just love to see it. So the last song for the first third is Shiriko's Solo of Death. Make sure you have continuous show mode on because this song can easily just end you with its appeal chances. You don't want to be taking surprise damage and then just fail the song and waste 9 PP. With continuous show mode, you can always pause and quit the song even after you fail. So it's very important to have that on. Anyway, we've done this song plenty of times actually, at least for the Aqua DLP. So the strategy here for me is that uh, we only need one clear of it because it's only a 4.8 million. So make sure you have one strategy of three guard type cards to take advantage of the increased skill activation rate for appeal chances two and four. Then on your main strategy, you just have some kind of sustain card to keep you healthy. Here I choose to use the SP type Rima. Since she's a elegant attribute card, and then whenever you have those appeal chances that do significant amounts of damage at the end, make sure to always switch to the green strategy as well that has the three guard type cards for an additional 15% damage reduction. The goal here isn't really to survive until the end of the song, but you can always do that if you have a revive show ability that activated. And I did make sure to reset until I did get the revive to activate from my Yoshiko. Because without this, uh, I actually don't have enough to reach the 4.9 mil requirement. I got to around 4.7 mil, so I really needed to actually finish the song for the additional notes and the final SP skill usage to actually get to the requirements. But if you have a setup that is slightly stronger than mine, then you don't need to be revived. You can just fail that last part because you do get the appeal chance reward even if you fail. Anyway, that is the first third of DLP. Sorry I'm not Sleepy Umida yet, but uh, there will be plenty of opportunities for Ramble later on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for more DLP.